to 10. Let God hear you praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah to God. Thou art glorious. Praising, praising him. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Praise God forever. Glory to the Lamb. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Glory be to God that us love and honor and adore and bow down before and worship, proclaim, exclaim, and acclaim. Hallelujah. Whoa. Stake your claim. Oh, make your claim. Thank God, thank God. Wonderful Jesus. Praising Him. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Glory to God, all ye people here below. His merciful kindness is great before us, and the truth of the Lord endureth to all generations. Wondrous Savior is to me. Take the big wave offering and wave it to him now. The wave offering on to the Lord. Back it up with the double wave offering. Ah, yes. Hallelujah to God. The double wave offering is for double portion candidates. It is also for people with arthritis of the elbow. Time to be healed. It is also for people who don't want to get it. It's also for people who some glad morning when this life is o'er plans on flying away. I'll fly away, old glory, practice out. Changed and gone in a twinkling. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. Wonderful Savior he is to me. Glory to the Lord. Ah, yes. Well, praise the Lord. Shake one hand for you. Sit back down. Tell them Jesus still lives in Davenport, believe it or not. Ah, yes. He still lives in Davenport. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praising my God. Thank God. And after you have caught your seat again, after you've pumped two or three wells, I'm going to read to you out of the book of Psalms tonight, a very interesting psalm. And we have to look into the book of Psalms every once in a while because, you see, it's the longest book in the Bible. You've got to preach out of it some. Is that true? So start opening up now to Psalms 68. Well, we're going to learn a few things about where God is at. Now, Charlie sings a song entitled, He Can Be Found. He can be found in the mother's smile. He can be found in the eyes of a child. He can be found. He's everywhere. When you kneel in prayer, each need in prayer, he'll hear. He can be found in the hearts of great men. He can reach down for one who has sinned, the peasant's daughter, or the rich man's son, all who believe and who will, let him come. Uh, he can be found everywhere you look for him. God is everywhere, present, nowhere is absent. He is the spirit. He is father. He is invisible. He fills all in all. He is above all, through all, and in you all. Happily, if you seek after him and feel after him, you may find him, though he be not far from any one of you. In him we live and move and have our being. And tonight we're reading out of Psalm 68. A few things about God's presence and where his presence can be found. <clears throat> First of all, in verse 4, sing on to God. How many believes we did that tonight? Sing praises to his name. Well, we praised his name, didn't we? That was worship. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens. So we extolled him tonight, and uh, he is riding on the heavens. Do you believe it? By his name, Yah, J-A-H. Amen. And rejoice before him. Let's rejoice before him once more now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now, Somebody didn't know that uh, one of the Hebrew names for God was Yah. Uh, it's kind of short for Jehovah. And Yah is the highest name there is, or the, the word hallelujah comes from this particular 
uh, uh, name for God. Hallelujah. Remember how it's spelled, the last three letters of the word hallelujah? What's it spelled with? J-A-H. So actually, uh, hallelujah is a word that means all of me for God. That's what it means in the Hebrew. So what you're saying is God does not want half of you, three quarters, 99% of you. He wants all of you or nothing. Some people have kept a certain portions and partitions of their life set back for a rainy day or for a, uh, an off day or a secret uh, fling or time, but God wants every part of you, every minute of you, every day of you. Hello. And so when you say hallelujah, which is the highest form of praise to God, you have spoke a word that is pronounced the same in every language. Not just the fact that it's a Hebrew word, but English says it hallelujah, Spanish hallelujah, uh, French hallelujah. Everybody knows what hallelujah means. It means all of me for God. Halle means all of me. Lu stands for four. And Yah, right here we have it in the Bible, a Hebrew name for God. So why don't you say all of me for God? Make sure you give him all of yourself tonight. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your whole body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which means it's the least that you could do for him. Amen. So you might just well say hallelujah or all of me for God. It means the same thing. So he rideth upon the heavens, extol him by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Now he not only rides in the heavens, but he is among some things that are created. And I'm going to read from the 17th verse. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. I right, jot it down. We've already read two places here where God is among. What's he among? His chariots and his angels. And now the Lord is among his Sinai and his holy place. Here's a very uh, enlightening scripture. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Hmm. Now, we have listed six things that God is among. Chariots, angels, Sinai, the holy place. Men and gifts. Six things that God is among, and six is the number of man. Is that true? So we're going to treat this uh, in relationship to man tonight. Finally, verse 19 is a good exhortation for everyone to shout. Let's shout it together. Blessed, together, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits even the God of our salvation, Zila. How many is loaded tonight? How many is getting a little bit drunk on the Spirit and you really feel loaded? Hallelujah. I believe the Lord is able to give you heaped up, shoved in, pressed down, shaken together, and running over good gifts onto your bosom. Now, if you're evil and you know how to give your children good gifts, how much more doth your Heavenly Father know how to give you the Holy Ghost? We got people that don't know how to receive the Holy Ghost too well, but God's got no problem knowing how to give you the Holy Ghost. He knows how to give it to you. If you can just get out of the way and let him give it to you. Let him lay it on you. Let him reach you with that unction. Let him pour the anointing upon you to such a measure that you overflow cup and saucer too. Say amen. Hallelujah. So we're blessing the Lord. He daily loadeth us with benefits. Now we're going to get some benefits here tonight. How many is glad to hear about benefits? Most people don't even want a job unless there's all kind of benefits to it. Say amen. In fact, it's going to be very beneficial for you to be in the place tonight, as we shall soon learn and see. The Lord, Jehovah, which means the Lord is salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. Now, that's a Hebrew word, of course, too. When it was translated into the King's English, King James, 400 years ago, it came from Hebrew as Jehovah. 
from the Hebrew to the English, and we pronounce it Jehovah in English. And it means the Lord is salvation, salvations of the Lord. Now, as the Old Testament is nothing but the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is nothing but the Old Testament revealed, what was the New Testament written in? What language? Good try, little brother, but keep on going to Bible school. The New Testament was written in the language of Greek. All right, it was written in Greek. And when it was translated to the King James English 400 years ago, the name Jesus, as we pronounce it in English, and the Spanish, I believe, say Jesus. Is that how they say it? But uh, the name English, uh, the name Jesus pronounced in English is Jesus, uh, means the Lord is salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. Do you believe that salvation is the most important thing to God? If you never get healed tonight, must you be saved? <laughs> oh, there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. So if you must be saved, get after it. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he's Lord to the glory of God. Amen. So if you've got to bow and confess anyhow, you might just as well get practiced up. I'm going to put my coat back on because I'm sweating and it's cold in here. And I'm not going to go out of Davenport with the flu. Say praise the Lord. So I'll break my little tradition. I always preach about my jacket on, but I'd rather do that and be well. Say praise the Lord. Wave your hand in victory. You happy? Now, in the Old Testament, there were seven compound names of Jehovah. The first time it was ever used was Jehovah Jireh, said God to Abraham. The Lord will provide. I see the, sacri the, the, the sacrificial altar, said Isaac. I see uh, the stones, I see the cords, the ropes, I see the knife, I see the fire, I see everything prepared, but where is the sacrifice, Father? Oh, said Abraham to his only begotten son, Isaac, fear not, Isaac, dear, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And aren't you glad the Lord provided himself a sacrifice? He did it himself died on Calvary for you and me. He was the sacrifice. And as the knife came down, the angel caught his hand and said, Hold it, Abraham. I see you will not withhold anything from me, not even your only precious boy, the dearest thing to your heart. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will never, ever, never, ever, never, ever withhold anything from you either. You wonder why God seems to be withholding a few things from you in your life? Could be you're withholding a few things from Him. Some of those dear things to your heart, those special pets. Hello? Oh, hear me now. Abraham, you will not withhold anything from me, not even Isaac. I'll never withhold anything from you either. Hey, this is a two-way street. It's a contract. It works both ways. God's sick and tired of people sitting in the kitchen saying, Lord, I'm thirsty. Run to the refrigerator and get me a glass of water. You get up and get your own glass of water. And then one day, God will do something for you that you cannot do for yourself. Is that the truth? Hallelujah. So if you don't withhold from God, he will not withhold from you. That is his promise. Hallelujah. Just then Abraham looked up and in the thicket there was a ram caught by his horns. Look there. Why? God has provided a sacrifice. Yes, said the booming voice from heaven. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. I believe God will provide for you whatever you need. Take no thought of tomorrow, for sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. I'm not saying to just sit around and twiddle your thumbs and don't work and don't make no plans. We are workers together with Christ, and you do your part, and God will do his. God will help those that help themselves, but don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be fretting and worried about it, because like in a great game of chess, every move changes the entire complexion of the entire game, and you've got to start all over again anyhow. Just one move by one person can factor in your life and just cause you to have to turn right around and go backwards to the plans you made yesterday. Say amen. All right, this being the case, 
The Lord is the one who provides for tomorrow. And the grass is clothed today, and tomorrow it's in the oven. And yet, God will clothe you and I too. Are you more valuable than the grass? I see that he has kept his word. Everybody here tonight's got clothes on your back. And we appreciate that. Say praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Glory. Now the ravens have no barn and they're too lazy to work, but God feeds them every day. And I believe we're more valuable than some ravens. Mm -hmm. And I believe God will feed us every day too. Again, I say, some of you look like you haven't missed a meal for a while. Say praise the Lord. Ah, yes. Now a sparrow don't fall to the ground, but what your Father in heaven knows it, and you're of more value than many sparrows. I believe if you do die tonight, the Lord has got an angel to receive you. He knows when your timetable's up. If he knows when a bird drops who has no soul and just perishes back to the dust, surely you that have an eternal spirit will have a messenger to guide you through the first and second heavens over to the third heaven paradise where Jesus is. Say amen. Ah, thank God. So God cares. Now, people in uh, Davenport don't care enough about you to read your obituary in tomorrow morning's paper. But Jesus cares. His heart is touched with your grief through the long day, weary and the long night, dreary. I know my Savior cares. His mercy endure forever and to all generations, and not just to the righteous, but to the wicked too. His mercy is extended. Hallelujah. that right? I love him. Now look, here is the lilies not toiling, not spinning, not worrying, fretting, having nervous breakdowns, never depressed. And all that glory that's in the lily, Solomon in all his riches never possessed. And if God will put that kind of glory in the lily, how much more will he pack the glory of God down inside your soul? Here tonight ye are more valuable than many lilies. Say praise the Lord. God will provide. Hallelujah be to God. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. All things work together for good to them who are the called according to his purpose. Ah, boast not of tomorrow. Thou knowest not what, a, what tomorrow may bring forth. Life is only a vapor. Say not we shall go to a certain city and there abide and gain and gain wealth, but don't worry about it. Do all you can and quit worrying about it. There comes a time when you tear down your barns and build greater because God has blessed you so much. And there's no sin in building a bigger barn, but the sin is in forgetting God and stupidly saying, let's eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Well, tomorrow we live, and the next day we live, and the next year and the next uh, eternity and the aeon and the next age, we shall always be alive, alert, aware, and living somewhere forever. Hallelujah. So God will provide Jehovah Jireh. Now, Let's analyze that word, that name. Jehovah, first of all, means what? The Lord of salvation. Then Jireh means the Lord will provide. Now, I like the sequence here because God doesn't care so much about providing for you as he does care about getting you saved first. That's why he revealed his plan by his name, saying, I am the Lord who first saves you and then I provide for you. I don't know what the world does when they need something. They're sunk. They got to go to the tavern. They got to go on a drunk. They got to shoot dope and smoke their brain. They got to run around with someone else's husband and wife. And that doesn't satisfy them until they break up someone else's home and husband and wife. Say amen. They're just searching for something to provide for their need. And they don't even know what their need is and nothing ever lasts, and they wake up in the morning with an empty wallet and a blue future and a red nose and a yellow streak and a white liver. Hallelujah. Say amen. And there they are, wondering why didn't it last. Because God didn't give it to you. And when God gives you something that will last, he is a provider. Hallelujah. When the world has a need, I don't know what they do. They can't do anything to make it last. But I got help in my dilemma. He saves me first, and he provides for my needs secondly. He's got everything in sequence, in chronological order. He's got it. 
uh, in proper priority. Aren't you so happy? Now there came a time when he said to Moses, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you listen to the word of God and obey my commandments, I will not put upon you all the diseases I put on the Egyptians. Now, Egypt's the type of the world. We've got a lot of worldlings out there that's yet unsaved, and they'd rather love the world than love God. Now, if you love the world, the love of the Father's not in you. If any man love the world, the love of the Father's not in him. The world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. Oh, I want to be constantly abiding. Now, all that's in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it is not of the Father, it's of the world. And that world is fading fast. It's changing every day. God never changes. Eternity always is the same. So if I can get into the spirit world saved, I'll never have to worry about ever backsliding again. Hallelujah. Yet, it seems like there are diseases today the doctors can't even name them, let alone cure them. And they are still searching for cures and can't find any. And when they cure one thing, they break out an epidemic of something else. They trigger more maladies and dilemmas. Because God said he would put diseases upon the Egyptians or those who were of the world, but he wouldn't put them upon God's people who were living godly. Someone said, well, I'm a saint of God and I got afflicted with old arthritis and sick. Well, maybe you did, but God didn't put it on you. The devil put it on you. You think that a, a, a righteous, holy God who can't do anything negative, he's a positive God, could come along and uh, pervert you? He wouldn't do it. All the devil slips in on you sometimes, and sometimes God even allows and gives the devil permission to do it to you, like in the case of Job. But God didn't put it on you, but God did promise to take it off you. Hallelujah. When the doctors can't do it, God will do it if you come to him. He said, if you will abide in my word and keep my commandments and live for me, I will not put upon you the diseases that I put upon the Egyptians or the people of this world. Say amen. Isn't it true? Hallelujah. Some people in this world got some bad diseases today. I hate to hang around them in one sense, but then when I get in the Holy Ghost, I know nothing can live in the Holy Ghost. I said germs die when I get in the Spirit. Say hallelujah. Same thing will work for you. God's no respecter of persons, isn't it true? Jehovah Rapha, he says audibly from heaven unto Moses, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I like that. First of all, we see that he is Jehovah, Savior first. You know, you can be sick in your body and go to heaven. If you never discovered the fact that Jesus was a healer. If you went to a church that thought that all the miracles ended with the apostles. And if you lived in the apostles' day and they put their hands on you, you could have the gift. But as soon as they died, the gift died too because you were unable to pass it on to the next fella. Strikes me, God's no respecter of persons. If one fella could pass it on, another fella could pass it on. But see, that's a big cop-out, because if they admit that it's the truth, they're going to have to also admit that it was extended clear down in 1984, and they're not doing it in their church, and they're showed up for what they're not doing. And they're going to have to admit that they've been wrong all this time, and there's too much pride for them and their denomination to ever admit that they've been wrong. Now, just because somebody don't have as much of Jesus as you got don't mean that what they got from Jesus is wrong. There's lots of churches and denominations that there's honest, good-hearted people in there that's got a small smattering in touch from the Lord. And what they do have of Christ isn't bad. Can anything bad come from Jesus? They might just need some more. But don't ever get to the point where you don't need no more because that's the day you're on your way out. You've got to continue moving and growing and going on with God. There's no such thing as holding your own checkmate and stalemate and sitting on the shelf treading water and biding your time. You've got to keep moving on, traveling on our, on our pilgrims, pilgrimage through this land. Jehovah, I am your Savior first. The Lord is salvation. After I get you saved, then we'll worry about healing you. Most people will come to Holy Ghost meetings like this, and they won't even think about getting saved until they get healed. Good thing God's merciful is all I can say. But once he heals you, you listen, old sinner man. Sin no more. 
lest the worst thing come upon you. God will heal a sinner. Yes, I've seen him do it many times. And warn him that he's in jeopardy if he don't get saved of having a worse affliction. He's taking a chance. He may not, but he's taking a chance. I've never seen a sinner get the Holy Ghost, though. He had to get cleaned up and washed up and hungry and starving and seeking God and praising Him first because the Spirit only falls when you praise and worship God. As you praise and worship Him, the anointing gets stronger within your life and if you quit worrying about it and thinking about it and try to figure it out and erase your mind with a blackboard and get the slate clean up here, your old carnal reasoning will be replaced by the mind of Christ and then you won't worry what it sounds like and what kind of a, a babbling person you sound like when it begins to flow and no baby talks plain when it first talks anyhow. It has to learn the language and if you fall flat in your face and you can't say no more, get up and try again. Hmm? If you fall flat on your face, and you won't unless you start thinking about, well, what do I sound like? I wonder what old Sister Jones thinks. Who's looking at me now? I wonder if God's pleased with me. Hmm? He must be pleased with you, or you wouldn't feel the quickening on your mortal body. Brother, make no mistake about it. I have a salvation I could feel, and if I didn't feel it, I might lose it and not know I lost it. Say Amen. You can feel the presence of God. How many feels His presence now? Even if you're not quickened at the moment by a permeating power, which you should be, which you could have, which if you'd try right now, you'd receive. If you just lift your hand, believe God, and just believe God the second time and say, Lord, I believe you for the unction. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Strive to enter into the Spirit and into that realm. Your effort and your faith would be rewarded by a flow of Holy Ghost electricity flowing over you. And if it only feels like 110, it'll give you a little kick. And if it feels like 220, it might knock you down. And if it feels like 440, you might leave this world. <laughs> Say hallelujah. But you have he quickened who was dead in trespasses and sin. Do you feel the Spirit of the Lord softly touching you now? Enter into it deeper by worshiping and praising and striving and believing and quit sitting around of a notepad trying to cut corners and economize saying, well, I wonder if I can get out of having this. I wonder if I can escape this. I wonder if I can shortcut over here. Strike a bargain with God over here. Compromise over here. Pretty soon you have reduced yourself down to the smallest piece of cake. When you can have your cake and eat it too if you only try. Say praise the Lord. Well, brother, I'm not looking for what I can get out of. I'm looking for all that I can get to get all I can and can all I get and then some. That's bad as the fellow was looking for a, a, a bus driver. And he gave him a test and said, which one of you fellows can come closest to this cliff without going over this bus? And the first fellow got right out there on the edge and he almost went over, but he, he held on. And the owner of the bus mopped his brow and said, whew, that was close. And the other fellow that was candidating for the job stayed just as far away from the edge of the cliff as he could, and he hugged the stone wall uh, the farthest distance from the cliff and, and played it so safe and cautious that the bus owner come over and said, you're the fellow I want for the job. I don't want any of these wild hoodlums running these big risks. I want people to stay just as far away from the edge as they can instead of trying to get as close to the edge as possible without dropping over. Say hallelujah. Well, we got a lot of people just trying to play it right to the edge. Just barely hang on. I want to get everything I can do and get by with and not drop into hell. And other people are staying just as far away from that as they can. Hallelujah. On the other hand, in the reverse, you want to get all you can in the Spirit. Don't stay away from what God uh, wants you to get. Climb the wall. The spider, take a hold of her hands, and she's in the king's palaces. Now, if you've checked out a spider, it don't have any hands. Sticks for legs. And it takes a hold of the wall and hangs on and climbs with hands, the Bible says, and don't have any hands. If you ask me, that sounds like faith, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Speaks, faith speaks into existence that which does not exist. 
This spider is hanging on with nothing left to hang on to. Yet she climbs a wall of hands that don't even exist because she's hanging close to the wall by faith and climbing step by step. Pretty soon we'll be in the palace of the king. She is in king's palaces. How many is going with me? Don't play fast and loose with the wall. Keep on climbing, little sister. You're the shortest part of your journey is ahead, and it's a long drop down. Don't look down. Look out. Keep climbing with no hands. Look, my no hands. But I'm climbing. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me tonight? Ah, uh, thank God. You know, if the spider played fast and loose with the wall with no hands, she's going to drop clear to the bottom like a few of you have done you've hit the bottom and some somebody said hey you know i'm just going to pick up where i left off i don't think the spider could do that she had to start right from the bottom and start climbing again hello what did revelation say in the book repent and do your first works start right down there little spider and climb again hello can you follow me tonight all you young people in the back seat, can you hear me tonight and follow along? I don't want no flirting and carrying on. I'm preaching. I'm not here to waste my time. Say hallelujah. Wave your hand in victory. This is God's house, not a fun house. Say praise the Lord. All right. I know they don't do that these days, but old Brother Freddie still does it. He's from the old school. Aren't you glad he is? I'll tell you a few more things if you want me to. I don't mind speaking what I see, whether it's in the natural or in the supernatural. <laughs> Glory to God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Rapha. All right, quick, somebody tell me what is it. Jehovah Jireh is what? The Lord who doth provide. The Lord who saves you and provides. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who healeth thee. The Lord who first saves you, then he heals you. Third time said Jehovah Nissi. Hold up your hands, Moses. I can't. Get Aaron and her on either side and hold up your hands. Okay, with their help, I can hold up my hands. With your help, I am preached tonight. Is that right? My hands get tired. My jaw aches. My tongue gets heavy. Aaron and her got on either side and held up the hands. As long as Moses' hands was lifted up, what happened down in the valley? They won the victory against the Malachites. Right? All right. And the Lord spoke from heaven the third time audibly and said, I'm Jehovah Nessai, the Lord your banner. Hold up the banner. Hold up the standard. And when I reprove you tonight or exhort you tonight, and the word of God is profitable for that, that's scripture. Amen. It's because I'm holding up the banner. I'm holding up the standard. I'm holding a higher standard because I want victory in the valley. I'm sick and tired of people down in the valley. One woman said, every time I'm down in the dumps, I get myself a new hat. And her friend said, I always wondered where you got those hats. And if you've been living down the dump, it'll not only show on you, it'll smell on you. <laughs> Say hallelujah. Isn't that true? I said, come on, smile now. If you've got mule face religion, I don't want it. Nobody in Davenport wants it. Amen. They see you coming, they'll run the other way. They think what you got is contagious. <laughs> they don't want to get it. But if it excites you, it might just excite them. Amen. Jehovah Nissi, lift up the banner. Hold up the standard. We need victory because there's too many people living in the valley fighting the devil down in the valley. I wish you'd get on the mountain and stay a while. Some folks never stay there long enough, but looks like after tonight, some of you that made the mountain could stay there a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Whoa, Lord Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is Savior, and then he'll lift up your banner. He'll lift up your standard. And when you start making a goal and a standard for yourself spiritually, then you can lift your head up. And if you just get your head lifted up, God will lift your heart up. And he'll lift your eyes up. And he'll get your mind up. And he'll get you up, 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 all the way up in the first resurrection. Brother, this is an up direction for me. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. That's what Jesus said. Oh, look up. 
for your redemption draweth nigh. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, for my help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Is it so? Amen. All right. Jehovah, Nisai, the Lord, your banner. Aren't you glad that you got victory now down in the valley? He, 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 glory be to God. I love him. Jehovah, Rhea, said David in Psalm 23. What did that mean? The Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Rhea, that's the original in Hebrew. So what he said was the Lord is Savior, and then he's my shepherd. How many is being fed tonight? How many sheep of his pastures in the midst? If you're a sheep, say bah. Hallelujah. A lot of times you have revival, you got a bunch of goats come in. <laughs> holding their head down saying, soft my horns and make me a sheep too. <laughs> We're going to have to do more than dehorn you. I said, sawing off your horns is not going to change your nature. You can scrub up a pig and put a button and a, on his nose and a ribbon on his tail and he'll soon be back in the hog pen again wallowing. I said, he's still a pig. He's got to get his nature changed. Say hallelujah. Got to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things passed away. Behold, all things becoming new. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Is it true? Ah, uh, my sheep know my voice, Jesus said, and another they will not follow. Do you ever practice up hearing the voice of God? If you don't even know the voice of God, how could you call yourself a sheep? Someone said, I don't think God speaks anymore. Why? What happened? Did he go dumb? Is he mute? Has he got laryngitis? Lost his tongue, his vocal cords missing. No lips, no mouth, no speech. I beg to differ with you tonight, but God still got all these things. And he can still speak. And just because you don't hear the voice of God, for goodness sake, that don't mean everyone else in the world don't hear the voice of God. Don't judge the whole world by yourself. What an awful world it would be. There are some that have heard and will hear, and some are learning to hear the voice of God. Thus they can call themselves a sheep and have a shepherd to feed them. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said, that giveth his life for the sheep. I am not only the good shepherd, I am the door to the sheepfold. By me, if any man go in and out, he shall find pasture. I'm entering in at the door. How many is going with me? If you don't come in by the door, you're a thief and a robber. You're not a sheep. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the door. The true vine, the resurrection, and the life. Amen. The water of life, the bread of life. He's everything to us. So now the good shepherd is feeding his sheep and they hear his voice and they follow him and as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All right, everyone say it together. Jehovah Rhea, the Lord, our shepherd. First he saved us, Jehovah. And then he is our shepherd. He is feeding us. Are you eating tonight? grazing in green pastures. Ooh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm going to eat. i got a shepherd. Hallelujah. He's going to take care of me and drive the wolf from my door. Praise my God. Oh, glory. I do love him, don't you? Came to Gideon and said, "I Relax, Gideon. I know you've seen God, but you're not going to die. I am Jehovah Shalom which means the Lord, our peace. How many got peace tonight? You know why you got peace? Because he's Jehovah first. He saved you first. That's why you get peace. Peace that the world never gave, the world can't take away. Peace that passes all understanding. It fills your heart and your mind tonight. Oh, the wicked are like a troubled sea. There is no peace, saith my God, unto the wicked. And if you don't have peace tonight, you could be wicked. If you have got peace tonight, He's your Savior first. And that's why you got peace second. There's a lot of people seeking for happiness, peace and happiness. They'll spend a million dollars running around Polk County and Hillsborough County trying to be satisfied and be happy. And they never can be happy and they don't understand it. They have spent all and they're still unhappy. Yet there are people that will give their life to God and do His will. And suddenly one day they'll look around and say, Hey, you know, I'm happy. 
I never used to be happy. How did I get happy? Happiness. Mark this in your notebook. This is important. Happiness is a byproduct. It's not a, a direct object. It is a byproduct of what? Of serving God. A byproduct of doing His will. You serve God and do His will, and you automatically become happy. You can't explain it. You can't understand it. And it don't cost you a nickel. Jehovah Shalom. Hmm? The Lord your Savior is now your peace. Oh, He is my peace. Look my name up one day in the book and it said Frederick, a peaceful king. I said, hey, you know, that's the truth. I got peace that I can't hardly understand and I do feel like a king today. Say praise the Lord. Ah, thank God for peace. Peace I leave you, not as the world giveth, give I you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. If it weren't so, I would have told you, but I told you it's got to be so. That where I am, ye may be also. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Jehovah Shalom is after me. He's coming after me. He's already come within me and in me. Now he's coming after me. He saved me and he's given me peace. And when Gideon saw this, he offered the kid on the sacrifice and the angel of the Lord touched it with a staff, consumed the sacrifice, accepted the sacrifice, the honor and the worship and disappeared into heaven. Now, angels will not let you worship them. But whenever you find a personage in the Old Testament called the angel of the Lord who also accepted worship, you knew you were looking at God. I said this was theophany, an appearance of the pre-incarnate Christ. This was deity. This was divine. This was what God, only God himself would accept for himself, worship. None other created being will accept worship except the devil and his henchmen, and all his superstars. <clears throat> Hello, wave your hand in victory. <sighs> oh, he said, I'm so glad I got peace at Gideon. I thought I was going to die. I've seen God. He's accepted my sacrifice, and now I have peace. Aren't you glad you made a sacrifice to be here tonight? Aren't you glad that the sacrifice is offered to God by fire? We got a lot of folks with wildfire and backfire and all sort of fire and strange fire. But you know what all your fire is for? To offer the sacrifice on the altar to God. So if you've got the Holy Ghost and fire tonight, it's for you for you to make a sacrifice for God. <coughs> offer it to him and who accept it, a sacrifice by fire. You have not received the fire just to make you feel good and make you shout and run the aisles and holler and get high. You're to work for God with the power God's give you. You're to offer sacrifices to the Most High by your fire. How many understand? Now, here quickly, uh, Jeremiah uh, spoke one day and said, the Lord spoke to him and said, I am Jehovah to sit in you. Jeremiah was prophesying about righteousness. He began to realize about the righteousness of man. He said, all your righteousness is as filthy rags. He said, your best effort is so far short of the promise. I don't see how God could ever accept you. Suddenly a voice from heaven cried, I am Jehovah to seek in you. Which means, I am the Lord, your righteousness. Huh? You want some appropriated righteousness tonight? I mean, as hard as you try to live holy, some of you have just botched up and made a mess of it. Say amen. You're going to have to get Christ righteousness for yours because yours don't seem to be going no place. I'm not telling, advocating you to do nothing or not try or put forth an effort. You must always strive. You must always try. But in the final analysis, your best effort still must be superseded by Christ's righteousness. Now, first, he is your Savior, and then He's your righteousness. Aren't you glad He saved you from sin? Now, because of His righteousness, He's going to keep you from sin. 
You're going to stay righteous no matter how many heathen you work beside and rub shoulders with and listen to those dirty jokes and all that cussing all day long and blowing that old tobacco smoke in your face. Say amen. Jehovah to sit can you. Your Savior is your righteousness. He'll keep you shielded in his righteousness. You don't have to be contaminated by association. We've got wimps on our hand today. Paranoid Pentecostals that go hide inside four walls of a church. Holier than thou. If I can just get back to the church, I'll make it through the day. If I can just get into the sanctuary and sit. Don't talk to me. Oh, that's a sinner. I'm not going to answer him. I'm talking about whimpering wimps. Say hallelujah. Oh, uh, I, I can't speak to you because you're not saved. How in the world are you ever going to get him saved? Did you ever think that the church was a museum for saints or something? It's a hospital for lost souls. And, and it's not gonna, your church is not going to amount to nothing if you don't go to the highways and the byways and the lanes and the hedges of the city and compel them to come in. Don't take no for an answer. Do just like Brother Freddie does in the middle of the meeting. Go down and get them by the ear. They might get mad at you, but they'll shout with you in glory. Thanking God that somebody had the guts to go after them, get them straightened up and cleaned up and ready to go to glory so they could go and stay there. They'll be so happy in heaven. They might be mad down here, but they'll be happy in heaven. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Oh, most of you are happy. Well, my, I see I have my work cut out for me then tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jehovah, to sicken you, your Savior is also your righteousness, and he'll keep you shielded and surrounded by that righteousness. Finally, Jehovah... Shammah, he says to Ezekiel in the last chapter when Ezekiel was measuring the temple. Where's the Holy of Holies? Where's the Ark of the Covenant? Where's the place to worship? Oh, this temple's different, said God. There's no furniture here to worship on or around or before. I am in the midst. My spirit is here everywhere present. I'm enshrouding the place, and when you come into this temple, you'll be worshiping in the Spirit because I am concentrated in this place, pounds per square inch. You know, the pound of spikenard, very costly. I said a heavy anointing. I didn't say a tickle or a tingle or a touch. I'm talking about a heavy anointing where you can cut the air of a knife, it's a heavy I am Jehovah Shema, which means the Lord is here. The Lord is there. Aren't you glad the Lord is here and the Lord is there and the Lord is everywhere, but especially the Lord is right in the midst right now. Oh, by his spirit that will break every yoke, he hath come to us. Oh, he is in a general sense everywhere in the universe, but he concentrates his presence and self and essence right where people congregate together to worship him and he comes in such impact and compact that he performs the phenomena and the supernatural to the point of a creative miracle but when he speaks the whole world stands up and listens anything that god tells this planet to do it will do high time we started obeying too say amen is it so Say, I love you, Jesus. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is here. Aren't you glad he's here tonight? As far as the text is concerned, God is among his chariots. Aren't you glad that he has 20,000 chariots? The Lord is here, the Lord is there, and he's in his chariots. Somebody didn't know how many chariots God had. Who was it? Did not know how many chariots that God owned. Well, God bless you six honest people. In Psalm 68, he has 20,000 chariots. And I am sure if I kick the bucket tonight, he's got one to spare for me. 
to come and bear me over life's tempest and life's turmoiling sea and lift me up above the shadows and carry me through the clouds and on into the glory world of the third heaven. If he did it for Elijah, he'll do it for me. Elijah went in his body. Elisha went in his spirit. They buried his body that was sick in a tomb and it raised a corpse from the dead. But when the king come down and looked over Elisha and Elisha's body was dying, his body didn't go. The king said the same words over him that Elijah, Elisha said over Elijah when Elijah went in body. My father, my father, the horsemen of Israel and the chariot thereof. And though there was no chariot that took Elisha's body, the chariot was still there. The, even the king saw it and it took his soul. So I don't care if you're going in body or you're going in soul. If, if it happens tonight, you have to go in soul, your spirit. But if the trumpet sounds, you go in your body. Isn't it true? Hallelujah. Are you listening for a trumpet? 20,000 chariots, I believe God's got one to spare. and You don't know how many times he can use the chariot in a moment's in the twinkling of an eye, the same chariot. He can use it over and over and over. And I believe tonight that you can go farther with wheels under you than you can walk in. Say amen. The Egyptians were trying to go into the Red Sea, but only God's people could function in that realm. We've got a lot of heathen running around and trying to enter in and function in the realm of the Holy Ghost, and it's killing them. It's zapping them. It's just boggling their mind, and, and they're out of it and have nothing to do with it. Don't even know what happened while they was going through it. Because you just don't function in the same realm as the Israelites do if you're an Egyptian. And God didn't want them going into the Red Sea and drowning themselves. He pulled the chariot wheels off their chariots. And they drove them heavy. So there are a lot of people tonight around Polk County driving heavy. Dragging bottom. Getting nowhere as fast. Making a supreme effort and making no progress. Why don't you check your wheels on your chariot, find out if they're on there. And if they're not, maybe God's trying to tell you something. Trying to keep you from doing something that you're dead bent on doing and you're not prepared yet to do it. You're not ready for that realm. It's called Egyptians functioning in a non-familiar realm. But I want to get used to the presence of God and I want to get used to functioning in the realm of the Spirit. This is a brand new world walking through the water. Hallelujah. It's a brand new realm in there. A brand new function and I want the unction that will help me to do it. Thank God. God's got 20,000 church. He's among them. And I'm glad. And he's among his angels. I mean, believe the angels are here. Now, the difference between a, an angel and the Holy Ghost is the fact that an angel is a created being and the Holy Ghost is God himself. God himself is everywhere and an angel is only from 8 to 10 foot tall and has a spiritual body. Yet they are both ministering spirits. The Holy Ghost and angels are ministering spirits. Sent forth the minister to us who are heirs of salvation. Okay? I mean, understand? Now, someone said, how do you know, Brother Freddie, that angels are eight or ten foot tall? Well, I know because the Bible said that mankind is made a little lower than the angels. <laughs> Amen? Someone else asked me a question one time. said, Brother Freddie, how come I've never seen an angel? I said, uh, well, I'll give you the answer to that. And there are folks here tonight that's wondered why you never saw an angel. You talked to people that did. How many wondered why you didn't ever see one? All right, I'm going to tell you why you've never seen one. <laughs> they don't come out to midnight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had a double purpose for telling you that. Invariably, first of all, in the Bible you read where, and at midnight God sent an angel, and at midnight he sent an angel, slew the firstborn, at midnight he sent an angel and opened the prison, at midnight the, the Lord sent the angel and the earthquake shook the place, the jailer showed his face, Paul said, do thyself no harm, we've not broke jail. I always seemed like at midnight God did something with an angel. At midnight, he sent out an angel and slew 180,000 Assyrians with one sword. Boy, that's a 
powerful angel. Hello. Now, since most of them don't come out to midnight, you folks will never have to worry about being forced to look at an angel tonight. I see folks looking at their watch. They'll never see an angel. Don't you ever have to worry about that? <laughs> Say hallelujah. They could never stay up long enough to see one. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> hallelujah. The Lord, however, is still among his angels. Are you hearing me? And he's among his chariots. And he's in his Sinai. Remember how terrible it was at Sinai? Moses said, I do exceedingly fear and tremble. I can't stand the sight. If an, a beast touched the mountain, he must be thrust through for, for, with a dart. The smoke and the fire and the, and the earthquake and the, just the tremor scared me half to death. And I'm, I've been in God's presence. And what about the poor people? Well, the poor people were saying, Moses, go tell God to go back to heaven. We can't stand no more of his word. I see a couple of folks here tonight can't stand much more of God's word. You're the same case as Sinai. And then they said, Moses, don't tell God not to talk anymore. We can't take his voice. Now there's a few that can't stand the word. I know there's a bunch that can't stand God's voice. When God gets to speaking and telling things and saying things, they just slide down behind the pew. Say praise the Lord. Well, don't think man's changed just because it's 1984. They're just the same as they ever was. Getting worse all the time. Hallelujah. Now tonight, if God was in Sinai, he will always be also be in his holy place. I believe we're in the holy place tonight. I believe God's here. Don't you want to be a little bit more holy? You'll come closer to God if you will. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Any place where holy folks are is a holy place. Because God, who is a holy God, will come and dwell there in a heavier unction than he will anywhere else in the universe. He'll concentrate himself in the midst thereof. Amen, you believe it. Finally, God is among his men. Aren't you glad that God is in your heart and soul? By man, he also means women. There's no male or female on the side of God. When you get to heaven, you'll find that out. All right, in your heart and soul, in his men who are obedient, saved and righteous, God is among his men. Thou hast ascended up on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Get it? Thou, Christ, hast received the gift. I received a gift the other night. Oh, yeah? I know someone received it before you did. Say Amen. Thou hast received gifts for men. The only reason you have a gift is because Christ received it. And he let you borrow it. Say amen. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also. Ooh, you mean we have rebellious men around? How many couldn't possibly believe that? That the Lord might dwell among them. Oh, you mean God is dwelling among rebellious men too? Only in a sense. Because he's not in the man. He's in the gift that he received for that man who is rebellious. Evidently, when he got the gift, he wasn't rebellious. He was obedient. But since he's got the gift, and the gift and calling of God is without repentance, God can't take it back. And then the man turned rebellious. God's not in the man no more. He's in the gift. That's very impertinent to understand and to be pointed out. God is among his chariots, 20,000 of them, among his angels, among his Sinai, among his holy place, among his men and women, and among his gift that rebellious men are operating and have received and cannot be taken from them. But God is not in the man. He's in the gift. And God will never be in a man until the man becomes obedient unto the will of God and does his will. Say amen. Okay? Can you handle it? Blessed be the Lord. All we can say to these things tonight is blessed be the Lord who 
daily load of us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Exhort one another daily, lest ye be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast on to the end. Now, why did we come again tonight? Why did I preach to you again tonight? Because it's another day, and we have to exhort one another daily. Every day, you must be exhorted. So have you been exhorted tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. You must be because sin is deceitful, and you will be deceived through its deceitfulness if you're not exhorted daily. And so tonight, what shall we then say to these things? We shall say, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who, who, who provides. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that Jehovah Nissai, the Lord our Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Raya, the Lord our shepherd. Psalms 23. Jehovah Tisitkinu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. The Lord is here. His presence is in the midst. And he's not only in the midst, he's in his 20,000 chariots. He's in his angels, even thousands of angels. That could be a million thousands. He is in his Sinai. He is in his holy place. He is in his men and women. He is in his gift, even though rebellious people have them. Oh, I'd rather him be in me. Don't you want him in you? What shall we finally say to these things? Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us down with benefits that staggers us under the unction of the blessing. We can't even contain it. Can't even hold it. It just uh, brings us to our knees. The blessing gets so heavy. Load of us with benefits. The God of our salvation, Jehovah. The Lord is salvation. Selah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody, hallelujah. 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 Now interpret it, please. All of me for God. All of me for God. All of me for not half, three quarters, or ninety nine percent. All of me for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of me for God. All of me for God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nissai, Jehovah Rhea, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah to sicken you, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is here, there, and among his chariots and angels. Sinai, holy place, his gifts and his men. Finally, I want him to be right in us. And that day ye shall know that I'm in you, and you're in me, and I'm in the Father. Hallelujah to God. Oh, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory tonight. How many got that blessed hope? Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everyone that wants God to be in your life, not 99%, but 110%, jump to your feet right now. Let me pray for your soul. All over this building, rise up and let God get in your life in a brand new, marvelous, matchless, magnificent way. Lift your hands high and holy above your head while we do pray. Whoa, Jesus, touch now and reach every spirit and soul oh dwell in your men and women boys and girls uncles and aunts and cousins oh nephews and nieces and mums and dads and brothers and sisters and boys and girls all let the children of the lord have a right to shout and sing let the church shout amen hallelujah to god oh so be it selah hallelujah to god Lord, I'm praising you, your dwelling. Jehovah Sham is underneath my fifth rib right now. He is dwelling. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide beneath the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee any time you dash your foot against a stone. 
Hallelujah, my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That rock has been a shelter for me. In the time of trouble, hide me in thy pavilion. Oh, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. The angel of the Lord is camping around about those that fear him because they trusted him. Oh, hallelujah, the young lions do lack. You suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Evil shall slay the wicked. They that hate the righteous shall be desolate. But the Lord redeemeth the souls of his servants, and not one of them that trust in him shall ever be desolate. I'm old, I was young, never have seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. I've got inside my soul. Tonight, Jehovah, they're providing and healing. Whoa, lifting up my standard. <laughs> Giving me peace, being my shepherd. Giving me righteousness. His presence is everywhere within. Hallelujah. From head to toe, from toe to head. Right to the hair of my head and the toenails on my toes. Thank God Jehovah Shammah is here. Just like he's in his church and angels. Just like he's in his sunny eye and holy place and in his gifts. He's in this man tonight. You're looking at a man possessed. Hallelujah. I want to see you possessed of the same unction from the Holy One. Rejoice and thank God that he's done it for you. Go ahead and praise him. I'm all done praying for you now. You're on your own. Ready or not, you got to fly. Like it or not, you got to swim. I'm leaving you now. Go ahead. It's up to you. Oh, carry on. Thank God. Praise him now. Praise, worship, and pray. And thank God for the fact that he's in you tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory be to God. Oh, he lifted me up, I know. When I was down, Jesus lifted me up. That's why I love him so. Hallelujah. Thank God. A few more moments of worship. God is listening and receiving it. Waiting upon it. Praise makes perfect. Perfection comes through praise. Oh, glory. The only pay he gets is the praise. Thank God. Thank God forevermore. Wondrous, wondrous, wondrous. Wondrous wonders he performs. Glory be to God. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Sing it with me. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus says to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes not seen, ears not heard, what's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Is he in you? Greater than he has been all day? How about any day before today? I must believe you've got a greater unction of God in your life tonight. You're going to keep it there from the rest from tonight and for the rest of your life on. He's all these things to us that we preached on tonight, which would do you no good if you don't keep them in the midst of your bosom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can be everywhere else. 
And it don't matter to me if he is in his chariots, angels, shiny eye, holy places, in his gifts. What counts of me is got to be in me, in the man. This man has got to leave this world. Hallelujah. Can't leave without the God in me to take me. God bless you. If you're satisfied that God has heard this prayer, you may be seated. And if you're not satisfied about the first prayer, stay on your feet and keep praying till you pray through. Hallelujah. Now, we could dismiss tonight right here. And it's been a wonderful revival for four days. Amen. On the other hand, I'll have people leaving here mad at me if I do dismiss right now. So I'm going to have to pray a few prayers here beside the initial important prayer that was just prayed, the most successful and important prayer tonight, the one that reached your soul. Yet there are other needs in the wake of this first prayer, and for those needs we will now pray. There are people here tonight that are disturbed and suffering with a common headache, a common headache. As common as it is, etc. can't move it. B.C. won't take it. That means before Christ. Say amen. But after Christ comes on the scene, as he now will, it'll be taken. Now, just like the common cold, which is the second thing I'm going to pray for. Doctors can't do the simplest things and get rid of the most common, simplest things that afflict people. But if God's word is the truth and went forth in power tonight, these things are going to be done in this meeting what all the doctors in Polk County just wishes they could do and can't. The first are suffering with headaches. I don't know how many of them there are how many of you there are but it will be a mass miracle that's what the Lord told me it'll be a mass miracle that means everyone with it will stand at once at one prayer and be healed and wouldn't the doctor like to be able to do that say amen everyone that's been bothered with headaches and pressures in your head today get on your feet I haven't talked to nobody Nobody have I talked to before church because I won't talk to anybody. And when you come running up trying to tell me something, I won't even listen to you before church. I'll talk to you after church. I don't want you messing me up in no way. If I listen to you, I will get messed up. If I listen to God, I'll have a clear head. Say amen. And all you that are standing is going to get a clear head right now. So raise up both hands above your head and get ready for God to take it. Havalo kashukulia mahatrala bahasai. <laughs> you lying devil. You're not going to hold these people no more. I knew it. I knew it all afternoon this was going to happen. Hallelujah. And here it's now going to happen at the first prayer of faith. I should say the second prayer of faith. But the first prayer for healing. Lord, in one mass miracle prayer. I ask you to remove every headache, pressure of every person that stood on their feet. Only those who stood will now be healed in their head. In the name of Jesus, I command this pressure to loose, loosen, loosen, go, 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 go. Be smitten, be gone, God. There it goes, there it goes, sister, sister, brother, brother, sister, mom, dad. Grandma, little girl, be loose, 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 loose. What's loose in earth is loose in heaven. What's bound in earth is bound in heaven. Now the suffering of your head has been commanded to go. It's gone. Rejoice now. There's nothing left to do but praise God for it. It's a mass miracle. One prayer did it. Don't sit down. Stay on your feet. I'm not like most preachers. Try to cop out kind of evade the issue and not check on whether or not it was done. I believe in proving everything, every step of the way. I'm just a stickler for that. The Bible said prove all things. And I love to do it. I keep looking at our brother's head right here. Lay your hand on it. Where's your pain in your head? All the way. Oh, just all over. I don't know where, where it is. It's, it's all over. You know, it's like 
come here. Uh, back. It's just a dull pain. That's where it was. Try and find it there now by searching. No, it just, it just seems a little, a little bit back here at the base. Where? Right back here at the base. On your neck, huh? Your head is clear. Yeah. Don't sit out. Stay there. Feel your head. And I felt the warmth when, even when you said people with common headaches. And I said to Mildred, my head's not common. <laughs> it's just hurting <laughs> on one side. But I feel a warmth coming where that pain has been for years. The pain's been there for years? Mm -hmm. You don't feel pain now? No. Why should you ever feel pain there again? If God can move it for 10 seconds, he can keep it gone forever. I know. Just remain, remain standing. Brother Harper, test your head. Mine wasn't hurting tonight, but it, only in the night, mine bothers me bad. When I go to bed, I guess it's sinuses. It wasn't hurting tonight, but I was standing up before it started. Praise God. <laughs> well, we're getting on into the night here. How's your head? You'll notice something, saints, by this next demonstration. Be listened. Now I'll try to find the pain in your head. Feel for the pain in your head. Oh, oh you can't believe it. Oh. I can do believe it. Where's the pain gone? It's gone. Now you remember me telling you something you're going to see a demonstration? I said, watch this demonstration. Anybody tell me what the demonstration was? Can you tell me what it was? Come on now. You're deeper than that. What was, when we prayed the first time, it was still there. Then what happened? The what? Laying on of hands. Read Hebrews 6, 1 and see if laying on of hands isn't one of the principles of the doctrine of Christ. If you ain't on a perfection and you're back living in the principles, we've got to go back to the principles to deal with you. You see that? Now, if you're in the realm of the spirit where you belong and should be, the spoken word will do it. If you're out of the principles and on a perfection, a spoken word can do that. But if you're in the principles, we've got to go back to the principles to work with you. Then by the laying out of hands, it was gone. You could heal the sick all night long by the laying on of hands, and it would take you all night long because it's a slow process. Is it not a faster process to speak one word, pray one prayer, loosen everybody of everything all at once? Woo. Talk about assembly line method. That's better than that. That's a mass miracle. That one prayer. You understood that? Okay, keep striving for perfection. Hallelujah. Even in the principles, it's good, however, to be there. At least we're in Christ. Check your head. Really? Where's your head pressure? Crossed here it was. But it's gone. Are you sure it's gone? Yes, it's gone. Yes, we know where you're at. What level you're at, we know. What about your head? You feel any now? Come on down here. You're still in the principles. Any pressure in your head? Oh, no. No, mine's been right up in here. All week long. It's, now I've got an ear infection again. And it's all week long. It's just sobbing, sobbing. It stopped at my head. And last night when you was praying... I didn't even tell my husband, but last night when I left here, I couldn't hear. But this morning, all day, I've heard him all day long talking. It done stopped it, and I haven't had no more trouble with stopping. Yeah, and a while ago, that sobbing, a headache, all week long, it's gone. It's amazing. Your head hurt now? No. Sure? I'm sure. Come, little sister.
neck be free. Bless this little fellow too who suffer the little children to come on to me forbid them not let them not suffer in Jesus name how's the neck it's fine it's fine no problem really how interesting show me the two spots the neck and the ear and the eyes and in the neck Jesus Check it. Feels good. <laughs> you see the difference between uh, the spoken word and the laying on of hands? Which I should say is the difference between principles and going on to perfection. I've not prayed for you before. Yes, you have. When did I pray for you? Not before last. What did God do for you then? Gave me surgery. Um, cleared my sinuses. Oh dear. My back. That's that's all I can remember. <laughs> Lord Jesus, lead her deeper. Launch her out into the realms of perfection. In Jesus' name, may she live there. Always. It's done. Everyone said it's done. Oh, glory be to God. Well, I better do it according to the pattern. Those with the common cold, would you stand? God would do the same for you. You've been attacked with cold. Rise up. The old cold flu virus, you know, the syndrome and the cycle and how it begins. Rise up and let it leave you. Glory to God. Uleban Robo Husrisri. All right, we're going to pray, but I'm not satisfied. Someone else ought to be on your feet. Get rid of this. The cold, the virus. The flu virus cold. Hallelujah. All right. Lift your hands above your head, you that's got it. There's really two more persons that ought to be on their feet. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray anyhow, and you can go home with it. I said well, you can go home with it for disobedience sake. Say amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we're praying even now that you loose these people of the cold and the flu and the virus that has settled in upon them today and yesterday it began. Oh God, even now, by a spoken word, let us be in the realm of the Spirit where the spoken word will take effect in our body, not in a principle. But on to perfection. Let us even now be loose. Loosen. Loose from the cold and the flu and the common thing that the doctors can't cure, but they wish they could. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. 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 It's gone. Hallelujah. Everybody said praise the Lord. Come again, sister. I'm now able to pray for who I want to. Now, God's already healed your ears. Lift your hands. You have been bothered somewhat also with your legs. Yes, Is that true? Yes, sir. There goes the leg aches and the suffering from your legs now. You've had something like a spasm catching you through your stomach area here. It feels like a cramp to you when it comes. It's not going to come again. You're going to be free from it now. Hallelujah. Everyone said praise the Lord. Worship God all together now. One more time, wave your hand in glorious, victorious victory. Oh, glory. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Wonderful Jesus, praising my God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah to the Lord. Better be healed in both legs. Yes, the cramp attack too. Another thing, you have like a full missing a choking comes to your throat. It's gone. Everybody put up your hands and say, thank God it's gone. God wants you free of that, you know. That's right, I've been wanting to get free of this too. This is the bonus God told me he's going to give you. Thank you, Lord. Come out of her. Loosen her now in the name of Jesus. Nicotine, tobacco, smoke come out of her body. I bind you, false, lustful, craving for foreign particles of smoke are necessary to the body. Be chained. No longer be a chain smoker, but let the smoking be chained. Ah, I'd rather have it chained than me chained with it. Lusa, Jesus' name. Everyone said, thank God is leaving out of her now. Oh, loose be gone. Spirit of hell, go back to hell. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Wondrous, wonderful Lord. Well, it's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. Just like Jesus to keep me day by day. Did I pray for you before? I thought I did. Well, Come, I'm sorry. God will heal you tonight. It's just like Jesus all along the way. Oh, go away. Before you leave, little sister, take a taste and see if you taste any tobacco flavor. No, sir, I don't. No? Praise the Lord for that. <laughs> That's a sign of deliverance from tobacco. Don't go back to it. Stand free, even though you might be tempted sometimes, it's only a force of habit that causes you to, to do that. But I promise you, you will not die if you don't touch another one. Yes, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You have my word on it. You won't drop dead if you don't smoke another one. Your legs ache now? Your legs aching? Not so at all. Well, did you come for God to heal you? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, you have been bothered through the stomach area, the lower stomach area in your body. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah. It's a little bit more so on the right side or this side that, that troubles you. Mm -hmm. Not only have you got something lodged in there, but you have strained it and it's trying to rupture on you, which adds to the complication. God's going to take that inside lump and the outside bunch and going to dissolve the twain so that you'll suffer no more. Do you believe it? Yes, I sure do. Take one step of faith. You have a stress that comes through your back, the lower part of your back catches you across here hmm? every once in a while no more will you have it you have burning sensation that comes to your eyes a little scratchy sandy kind of rocky particles that come in the corners the corners of your eyes yeah. you're not too old but people in your family have had eye trouble with the point of cataracts eye growths they're old folks that's true but someday we'll all be old folks. Right. <laughs> it's a hereditary factor. And God's going to clean your eyes off tonight. Should I stop there and pray for it all? No, we might as well get it all at once. <laughs> now someone's going to say this has to all, uh, some of that's bound to be right. If it's not all right, God won't heal none of it. Amen. I can stop here, if that's your pleasure. Any critics around and thinks I'm praying for too many things, just say so and I won't pray for no more. But then she, we're going to cheat her out of other things that she also needs. Now, you make up your mind, what should we do? Really, technically, if you really want to be honest about it, every time you add another fact upon a fact, and it also is the truth, the percentage of that being guesswork is a million to zilch. Can't be guesswork. It's either God or nothing. Hallelujah. You've had some poor circulation in your legs and causes your feet to go numb 
and lose the feeling. Mm-hmm. Yep. God's going to hear that. We could stop there, but I'm not going to. Hallelujah. There's something that has pulled in your neck, makes your neck to ache. It's a tension drawing in your neck. This tension stress is leaving. You have a weak muscle here, too. Sometimes you pull that muscle out and strain the neck muscle. I see mornings when you wake up with it. Blame it on your pillow and how you slept. Huh? Mm -hmm. You blame it on the devil. That's where it come from. It's going to be healed. Ah, uh, you feel the power of God already. And I see your faith is just bursting out all over you. If I tell you any more, you might get translated. I better stop. I really don't want to stop until I tell you about a little stress that has recently formed in your chest on the left half or the left side of your chest. And it's over your heart. And your heart has been strained. You've strained your heart slightly. And you've strained it through work over work. God is going to loose your heart. It, here's another sign. It will get numb down this arm. This arm. Let's yes, go. it does. The third sign that this is also true is I see you trying to sleep on your bed at night, and you cannot sleep on this side. You sleep over here on this side. Is that right? Mm-hmm. However, tonight I see you again going home, sleeping on this side all night long. As proof to you that you're healed. You ready? 